So you asked about trauma. One of the things that has been misinterpreted by many about the ACEs work is that the ACEs are about experience. They have nothing to do with their response to the experience. So in my book, In Vulnerable Minds, I make a distinction of an acronym that I hope is useful, which is ACEs are the experience of childhood adversity. Traces are the traumatic response to those ACEs. And races are the resilient responses to those ACEs. Sure. So we want to distinguish experience from response. And then within the response domain, we want to distinguish traumatic response, which is a basically a scarring of the body and brain with resilient is that bouncing back ability that some people, despite extraordinary adversity, seem to bounce back, seem not to be scarred by the adversity. Sure. Thank you. So would you say that, that <laughs> traumatic response is something that happens inside of you, not what happens to you, what happens to you is the experience the response is whether you develop trauma or internal trauma that you're now responding incorrectly to that event. Yes, and I, I think you got that perfectly. I would just adjust one word, incorrectly. In many cases, and I think this is an important lens that grows out of evolutionary biology. In some cases, I'm gonna give you an example in a second, the response that our bodies, brains, and minds have to the adversity is absolutely adaptive or turning your word around the correct response. Let me give you an example. A child who randomly from his or her perspective, dad comes home drunk and beats the crap out of me. Now I have no control over that environment. I don't know when dad's going to be drunk and I don't know when he's going to hit me. But my best response when I see people who look like my dad is to run away from them. And we work with many kids who come from physical abuse that if they see or smell or hear somebody who sounds like dad, they bolt out the door. And that is absolutely the best response. From that child's perspective, I am like prey. I've got this big predator, my dad, or an, a relative or a neighbor or whoever it is. They can beat me whenever it's completely unpredictable. So any sight, sound, or smell of that individual, I'm out of here. Hmm. Now, that's an adaptive response. Of course, over the long haul, it's a completely unadaptive response because you will not flourish. And so what often happens in schools, let's say, if you have children who are living under those conditions, is we have to teach them to not generalize that experience. This has happened to me countless times in schools i walk in and for some reason i remind them of their father and the kid who doesn't even know me runs out of the room like i've now learned <laughs> right that that's a common response and so my next move is i walk into class i sit down and i don't look at the child so i'm now smaller than they are i'm not as intimidating right so you have to help shape that response, because from the child's perspective, their brain is on high alert, the world seems unsafe, and generalizing is the best move. It's like this. If you're a gazelle on the savannah in Kruger Park, and you have a lion who attacks you, you don't go, oh, that's just that lion. Next slide, he may be okay. No, all lions suck, and I'm out of here, right? That's the child's way of thinking about the world, and that is exactly the right response. Mm. And so part of the education and the work that's done by teachers or social workers or therapists or doctors or anyone who's working to help that child is to teach them there are worlds that are safe, even if you are currently living one that may not be.